can we break the news now that Rashad Evans is a liar and he did not make up the news? <laughs> he's like, have such a now? liar. Such a liar. So how long does that go back? This, this is news to me. I just found this out. He did not make up that name. Who, you made it, it came up years ago, high school? I've been, yeah. My license plate in high school was Meat. <laughs> yeah. But whatever. He brought it, he brought it to MMA, I guess. So I All got right. you, coach. All right. Speaking of now the, what's to come, uh, was, you know, because of what happened in the, in the last fight, 15 seconds and ended, all the, the stuff that goes around, was that a frustrating thing? Not the kick, not all that stuff, but a chance to bounce back from the, the Bader loss, get right back into contention right away. Was, was that a part of, was there any frustration from that because you couldn't get back on the winning way right away? No, I mean, it, the, the biggest part of disappointment was disappointing the fans. That's all. Mm. Frustrating because I like to put on a good show. I was prepared for it, as he was. Just didn't prepare his nuts the right way. Should have done that, like, Shaolin monk type of thing where they bang themselves in the crotch. <laughs> Is that what you do? Do you do that? I do that now. Uh, My testicles are prepared. Uh, I already have three kids, so really it doesn't. Yeah. I don't really need them that much anymore. <laughs> I'm done. I already have a vasectomy, so go ahead and bang away. Uh, we're breaking more news. You know? Vasectomy. That's how it goes. You, had, you made that name. That's there how it goes. You know. Was it, yeah, I saw in a recent video you did for, for Bellator, you were complimenting Sergey's boxing big time, saying he's got, he's got his boxing is one of the better boxing styles in MMA. Well, what is it about his boxing that's more difficult than maybe some other heavyweight fighter? Well, he's got a very educated jab. Uh, he doesn't hide it. He uses it very well. Great range finder, but uses it to damage, not just to, to set up his straight right. Um, it's a, a lot of power. It's not very fast, not very quick, uh, but he relies on it. It's, it is his primary weapon, and he throws it even in the third round when he's tired, and he throws it with the same amount of fuzz that he throws in the first round. Yeah. So he's dangerous with it, for certain. That's the reason why I brought in Layman Brewster. Layman and I mm. uh, worked so much together this whole camp because yeah. I wanted to work with a very educated boxer, and there's not many more educated than, than, than Layman. Mm. <clears throat> um, so we worked together on just the power, the delivery, like the range in which we expect it to be at and the range right. that I need to be at in order not to get stuck with it. Now, uh, the, the other thing is... Um I've talked to a lot of different fighters from Hard Knock 365 that have worked with Henry Hoof. You work with Henry Hoof. He seems like a phenomenal guy. They all rave about his his style of coaching, that he makes it simple. He makes it very easy to learn. Like I talked to Martin Nguyen. He, he loves him. He recently went to Hard Knock 365. What makes him a special kind of coach, especially in the striking game? Um, you know, that's really difficult to answer because I I have a very good and very unique relationship with coach. So... I know with me, that's the only way I can really speak. I don't know. I see how he is with other people, but I can only speak on my personal relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And my relationship with him is uh, very much like a, a very brotherly, very jovial, but also a lot of respect yeah. in that aspect where um, he, uh, he, I never worked with the striking coach before him. So I was, mm -hmm. I started working with him, I think in my sixth or seventh fight. And so by that time I had, I had only native approaches to what I did. I didn't have any rhyme or reason behind it. So I didn't know how to hit pads. I didn't know how to do anything else. So I would get really frustrated with myself because I didn't know how to hit pads. I didn't know timing. I didn't know methodology. Uh, and, and we had to grow together in that because he had to learn how to handle me and kind of corral me a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have a really good relationship. We've, we've, we've grown and developed a lot. And now that I don't go down to Florida as much because I have a team in Indiana mm. and my babies are older, yeah. that... He knows my, he, he calls, he does videos, he, my, my teammates talk to him, hey, this is what we did, this is what he's doing well right now, this is what we need to feel like we need to work on, and he watches videos about what we're doing, so he still critiques what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and he knows that I'm always going to show up in shape, but it's just, a, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a long distance relationship, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it still works out very well between the two of us. Now on Instagram, I follow you, and I've seen um, Chris Lytle is, is part of your camp, right? Yeah, or at least for sure. close friend. And I inter interviewed him before his uh, bare knuckle debut, and mm. fascinating guy. Uh, he almost feels like a, a young grandpa the way he talks and the way he interacts. Just super nice guy. What yeah. is your re like relationship with him? Like, because you're from the same <clears> region, he has a great knowledge of. Uh, does he has he kind of filled in the Henry Hoof void? Chris in a way? is uh, no, hasn't filled the Henry Hoof void. But Chris is is a mentor, yeah. uh, and it's it's it is beyond just striking. It's it's grappling, wrestling. It's life experiences, really. Like as far as uh, things that I handle, like when I was going through my divorce, when I had certain things going on, there were just hey man. 
I feel this way, like I'm stressed out with this and it's affecting this. It's, I try to um, compartmentalize my life, but it's starting to seep into this. And it's like, dude, I've been through this. I know where this is at. This is how I handled this situation. Mm -hmm. And so we can talk about all kinds of different aspects, not just fighting, but how they uh, are applicable or how they, they kind of seep their way into my fighting life. And he's been through all of it. You know, and it's, it's, he's been through a thousand fights and he's never been knocked out or submitted. While being a fireman. Yeah. Uh, and so from all that, like I had, uh, like whenever I would lose, I could go talk to him. You know, I'm like, man, I'm sorry I let you down. I'm like, dude, you didn't let me down. I, I don't want you to be me. Yeah. It's like you do things that I was never able to do. Mm. He's like, so I don't want you to be that guy. He's like, I, I'm, I'm proud of you for this. He's like, and you had this adversity and you did this instead. And your first fights were in the UFC. Nobody else had done that to that point. And you've made this much of a career out of mm -hmm. it and instead of being washed out so quick because you got thrown in over your head. So there was a lot there that he kind of walked me through and taught me. And that's the reason why I call him my mentor. How important was it to get this particular fight back just because of the 15 seconds? I know you were disappointed more so for, for the fans' sake and the entertainment part of it, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a, I guess for a fighter it's important to, to move ahead and put a chapter of, of a fighting career behind them. Was it important to get this particular fight or just getting back as quickly as possible? It was the only fight that made sense. There's no other fights in Bellator heavyweight division right now that makes sense more than Karatanoff and I, uh, or me. Uh, that's it. So it's is the only one that I knew I was going to get. There was no reason for me to fight anybody else. And uh, after I beat Karatanov, which I believe I will, um, then whatever happens, happens. I don't, I don't have enough zeros in my paycheck to make that decision. But I do know that uh, he is, he and I are, are two and three, three and two, uh, the, 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 the best heavyweights in, in, in heavyweight division behind Bader. And, um, and I think that this here is a fight that had to happen. So I'm excited to get it done. Six months is, is a while. So do you wish it was happening sooner, obviously? But of I course. Mean, or was it kind of a blessing that it was six months? No, I wish it happened sooner. I asked for it the next day. I asked for it on Saturday. Right. I asked for it in Chicago, and I think in May, May 11th. And uh, I get it in October. There you go. August. 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 <laughs> Summer in New England. <laughs> Whatever. But a hot day. You were, at yeah. the <laughs> for you were at the press event earlier. Yeah. Uh, the city of Bridgeport just It was like crazy. 100 degrees, man. It was so hot. Like 10 o'clock in the morning. How was it so hot, man? I have a headache from that now. Golly. <laughs> I came from Western Mass, so it was like 79 degrees. Right yeah. There. Not so much, like 92 man. degrees. Yeah, there. not so crazy. much. In terms of just being a part of that event, the, being a part of the growth of MMA in mm -hmm. Connecticut, I mean, obviously there's been fights in Mohegan and Foxwoods and things like that, but mm -hmm. this, is, this is a big deal for the for the state of Connecticut and for Bridgeport itself. What was it like to be a part of that event and be a part of the growth? Well, it's pretty cool. And it's nice to, uh, Mohegan was great to me. Uh, Foxwoods was great as well. But it's, you don't get a feel for the culture or the state or the city or the vibe when you're in a casino. You just don't. Same thing at MGM. You don't get a, f a flavor for it. It's just its own entity. So it's nice to be able to get out and then go walk up and down the streets and meet people and see the architecture and the city and, and, uh, and go to restaurants. So it's nice to be able to do that. So I'm really happy this all worked out. Because not that Connecticut hasn't been great, but it's great to actually get in a chance to be in Connecticut now. After a quick fight like the first one, how did you burn off all that extra adrenaline? That's a good question. I didn't go drinking. I don't know what I did. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Good question. <laughs> I think you do know. Yeah. But well, maybe. Yeah. I, I, I get you. I get yeah. you. How do you see this one played out on Saturday after all this time? Um, Caratonos are really tough, dude, man. He's durable, uh, patient. So uh, I see myself getting my hand raised. I don't see it being easy. And uh, he's tough, man. He's, he's weathered, and uh, he's, uh, he'll be, he's, a, he's a formidable challenge. It's, it's, a, it's, it's legit. I'm looking forward to it. As you walked in, as you were pushing Danny into the room, we were talking about season's kind of tough and all this stuff that's been going on. I mean, you, you've, been, you've had a long career. Yeah. It doesn't seem like that, you know, kind of looking back. It just seems like only yesterday that we were introduced to you. How, how much have you grown? Like, what's the biggest difference between the Matt Mitrion then to the Matt Mitrion we're going to see in the cage on Saturday? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, it was funny, we were talking about that yesterday, and it's like that I've had a certain career. I've, I've been successful to a point, especially for not having fights before and, and not being in the sport at all. Uh, and it's like my fan base it just isn't much. I'm, I'm appreciated as a fighter, but my fan base isn't high. Like my social media and, and whatever else, my, my viewership I think is, is, is rather decent, but it's not, it's not top of the charts. And uh, we were talking about it. And it's like it's almost a thought that the ultimate fighter has followed me straight through where it's like people are like, oh, they knew him as, 
a jerk off, blah, 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 on the Ultimate Fighter. So that's got to be who he is now. So fuck that dude still. Uh, and it's interesting that, and I understand that like MMA fans are, are highly fickle. Right, so I wonder if like Junie Browning would be the exact same way, or this other person would be the exact same way if they still had a career, or even if it was a, a, a moderately successful career. So I wonder, you know, and it, it's, it's interesting to see that. And the response was, "Look, dude, it doesn't really matter because pretty much everything I do somehow ends up on a highlight film. Either like my eye, good or bad, positive or negative, kicking cats on of his nuts, or me knocking out Fedor the way it happened, or whatever else." ends up in some kind of a highlight. So the world sees it regardless whether they go to your page to see it or not. So just keep being the highlight that you are, whether it's with your mouthpiece, hopefully not, but it's, you know, <laughs> or with your hands. So, or your, your shins for that matter. So whatever it is, just keep doing it. So it, um, yeah, I don't know what the hell I was going with that. I'm just rambling. So, <laughs> do you hope that someday people can can kind of get past tough and all that stuff? I mean, look at look at a guy I'm, like Chris Levin. He was yeah. he was a nightmare on that show. I'm a decade in. He's loved, right? Yeah, um, I'm 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 a decade in, man. So, and if you don't like me by now, you're not gonna like me. So go to hell. Like I really don't care. Uh, and there's really like it's more of like a position. Like well, like if you don't understand me, then either you're not you just you just don't get it, uh, or you just don't care enough to try to get it. Either which way, I'm not going to change your opinion. So have a good time being whoever you are, man. I'm still going to be me, and I'm getting paid for it. So have a good time. If all goes the way you think it will on Saturday, mm -hmm. which you're not going to expect yourself to lose here, mm -hmm. it's belt or bust at this point. I mean, you talk about where we're at in the heavyweight division right now. This fight is the only one that makes sense. Yeah. Is, is the belt the only thing that makes sense? Well, I don't, I don't compete for red ribbons, you know. So uh, I, I want the best opportunities possible. And uh, after, I, after I handle this one, which will be tough, but after I handle this one, then we'll see. Like I said, man, if I had more zeros on my check, I'd make a decision. But I'm just a lowly pauper. <laughs> I got a few more. Uh, okay. On the fight itself. Um, Danny I loves when I talk like that, by the way. <laughs> really loves it. Everybody's <laughs> expecting this to be a fireworks fight on the feet, but I actually asked uh, Karatanov about you mentioning his boxing and complimenting it, his boxing. He twice suggested about that it's it's not just on the feet, his route to victory. And he has an ankle lock, key lock on his resume of submissions. Mm -hmm. Is that something you have factored in it? If it, does, if it gets hot on the feet, he may try to take you down? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, but I expect everybody to try to take me down. Mm. Uh, you have to get a hold of me, right? And uh, we, we spend a lot of time working on our takedown defense, our offensive takedowns as well. So I mean, we, I'm, I'm prepared. Wherever it goes is going to go. I mean, whatever happens is going to happen. I can't, like, I'm prepared. Hayes in the barn. So <laughs> I'm not going to learn anything from now to Saturday that I have done already now. Pick for Congo Bader? Uh, Bader. Bader's going to out Congo Congo. Uh, and uh, just a couple more questions. Uh, you know, you're a heavyweight, been a long time heavyweight, very successful heavyweight. Where do you see a guy like Stipe Miocic's place in this history of this sport after, you know, winning, beating Corbin last week? Well, he's got to be the best heavyweight. I mean, look at his record. Look at what he's done and who he's knocked out. Even Look over Kane or Fader, you still put him best ever? Especially since you fought Fader? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a different different world with Fedor. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Now the other one is, uh, I mean, Chael has really st stepped in a place where he's a great ambassador for the sport, ambassador for the Bellator Bell brand. You, eloquent guy, very good speaker. I, I like hearing you talk. Would you like to transition? You've already done some announcing for Bellator. Would you like to get more opportunities like with that, with, like Chael's getting with Bellator, be out front, a brand ambassador, those kind of things like he does a lot? Or even announcing for, you know, like he does with ESPN, something like that? You know, man, I have three kids. Mm. My oldest is 13, my baby is eight. I spend a lot of time away as it is. Mm. I really like being home with my family. So if a job means I have to spend two days a week gone or three days every two weeks gone and I have to miss opportunities, especially on weekends when we travel. Mm -hmm. I'd rather stay home with my kids and make less money. I don't mind erasing my social media and disappearing. I can be an obscure nobody <laughs> pretty easily. All right, last question. Uh, you recently were at Submission Underground 8. How would you like the experience? It was cool, man. It was cool. Good experience. Uh, good grappling match. And uh, I've never done anything like that, really. I've done mm -hmm. two grappling matches before. I won a Naga belt. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was cool, man. It was fun. Can you see yourself doing more of those grappling? Yeah, I got no fear to grapple, man. So absolutely, yeah. I, I I get down, I grapple, I grapple. Some of the best in the world. Got my ass kicked a lot, uh, but it's still fun. Have a good time.